Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're working on a 2002 it's a Chevy Express fan. Uh, it's a 2500 series. Uh, we're going to be changing the, uh, the brakes on it. I just want to bring you in and show you exactly what it looks like before I start on anything. I was a little bit reluctant to even film this one and uh, the reason I was a little reluctant I'm going to show you because this, this van is beat to death and uh, of course the customer wants to put the least amount of money into it as possible. So let me show you what it looks like and then uh, unfortunately I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to try to, uh, to keep the course down for this guy here. So um, I normally wouldn't do this and I'm probably going to kick myself for doing it but I am going to do a pad slap on this and I am going to change the rear brakes without resurfacing the drums. Um, so let me bring you in, I'm going to show you uh, what it looks like and, and, and what I'm actually going to do. This was my first indication that I probably should not even be doing this one here, but uh, that's what the tire looks like, and obviously you can see somebody stuck two plugs in the sidewall of the tire, and the guy doesn't even want to change the tire. He wants to keep those tires on. But it doesn't matter because this is his other tire, and as you can see, it's about as, uh, as bald as my... Uh, as can be, there's really nothing there. It's right splitting in the, in the seams and right down to, to nothing. Um, this is the brakes themselves. And as you can see, there's a, there's a bunch of cracks in there. And let's get a light over here so you can see. This is the back shoes, what they look like now. They're right down to the the rivets and you can see where it's all starting to crack um, and like I said I'm going to do something I normally wouldn't do this guy doesn't want to put any money into it so I am going to just put brakes on it and not resurface the drums I usually never do it but I'm going to do it for this guy this is what the uh, the fronts look like as you can see those rotors are, are pretty much wiped out and they got to be replaced again the guy wants to put no money into this vehicle at all this is just me actually checking to make sure that the, that the slide pins and the calipers weren't frozen before I quoted them a price. Um, and so what we're going to basically do is I'm going to pad slap it, front and rear. And uh, like I said, it's probably uh, against my better judgment, but I'm going to do it. Um, all right, let me know what you guys would do in my situation. If uh, the customer's got no money and they need to get the vehicle on the road, would you pass it up? Or would you actually do the job for them and, uh, and, uh, and help them out? So, uh, all right. Um, let me get some tools. I'm going to get started on this, and I'll take you along and show you this half-assed half job that I'm going to wind up having to do for this guy. So, uh, all right, let me get some tools, and we're going to get started. Okay. Now, hopefully you, can, hopefully you can see okay. But uh, this is what I'm, what I'm going to be doing here. I already pushed the piston back in over here. You can see that uh, before I had that tool in here to push the piston all the way back in, and I did. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get into the back of the uh, of the caliper here. In the back of the caliper, there's a uh, 3 8 um, Allen key that goes in there to take it out. You can break it loose. We unscrew the fitting, the bolt, the slide pin, we unscrew it all the way out until it doesn't contact anymore. We do the same thing over here. I'll unscrew this bolt here all the way out too. I'm going to 
take our slide pins out. Really, this truck needs to have everything in the front brakes replaced as well. Right, we're going to take the caliper off. We're just going to put it up on top for now, like this. And we're going to take the brake pads out. Same thing on the other one. As you can see, it's just clips that actually hold this all in there. All right. We're going to put a little bit of grease on the back right here where it's going to fit into the caliper. And we just put this into here, like that. And we just push it in. And it stays in like that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our brake pad. Now even though it's a half-assed job that I'm doing here, you want to make sure your sensor is in the right location so that your sensor does come in contact with the rotor, which in this case didn't mean anything because obviously it was making noise and he just chose to keep on driving. All right, we're going to lubricate it a little bit where the, where the brake pad is going to slide in. It makes the slide a little bit easier. just going to push it down in there until it snaps all the way in where it's supposed to. Now even though it's a half-assed job that we're doing here, we're still going to lubricate everything just to make sure that whatever is there is sliding just a little bit. We're going to lubricate the caliper here. So as the where the caliper slide pins go through here, we're going to lubricate them. And we're going to lay our caliper back in. Our sliders, we're going to lubricate the sliders before we put them back in. Same thing on the other one, just lubricate it. And put it back in. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the Allen keys in by hand until they catch. You may have to jiggle the caliper around a little bit to get it to screw in. Same thing on the top one. And once you have them caught by hand, you can screw them the rest of the way with your ratchet. Yeah, we're all set. So, let me just show you. Alright, so what we did is uh, we lubricated the slide pins. We lubricated everywhere that the brake pads are going to go. We lubricated where the caliper is going to slide. And uh, that's it. We got that all set now. Like I said, I'm embarrassed to even show you this, but this is sometimes the uh, half-ass or backyard type um, work that I really wouldn't be doing, but this guy's a, a pretty good customer and he doesn't want to put any money into it. Times are tight, or well, money is tight, so um, this is what I got to do. So I'm going to do the other side over uh, on the right side, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you the half ass job that I got to do in the back. All right, we'll come right back. Okay, let me 
before you take it to back of all, we're going to clean off all of the, uh, the organic material that's in here. And we just take our brake cleaner and clean everything down really well. Gonna let the trip off for a minute. And what we're gonna do is I just want to point out that underneath here, we're gonna this is I'm gonna take you through the steps exactly what we're gonna do. First thing I did is I put a pair of, um, of pliers on here just to snip this line off just very lightly, I'm not gonna make it too tight, just a little bit to keep any fluid from coming through here uh, so that we don't damage the cylinder itself. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off first this spring and this spring. Then we're going to take off this rod right inside here, and then we're going to remove this here, and this here that holds down, hold downs, and then we're going to uh, remove the shoes. So, uh, all right, let me get the uh, tools and let's get started. Okay, now the way we're going to remove the uh, the shoes, we're going to take this spring right here and we're going to pull it off. You can use a tool that's made for it. Or you could use a pair of cutting pliers to pull the spring out, but this is the one that belongs in there. You take and you put it on the spring and you turn it, and you release the spring. Just put it off to the side. We're not changing the hardware now, so we're going to use this over again. We're going to do the same thing on this side over here. And pull that spring out. Put it off to the side. And now this rod right here for the self-adjuster, you pull down on the bottom of the adjuster here, and you pull this off the little tab on top, and just put that to the side because we're going to use that again also. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and you see this little C-clip on here? We're going to pry this out, and we're going to reuse this, so don't lose it. You put it behind there with a little screwdriver, and you just pry it up. When it comes out, it goes flying, so be careful. I'm just going to hold on to that for now. And then we're going to take off the, the shoes here and here. You push in on that little spring and you rotate it, and it comes right out. The way you rotate it is you see this spring, I mean this, this slot here. This piece here goes over the slot like that, and it locks it in place like this. And what you do is you push in, you rotate it, and you pull it right off. Don't lose this. We're going to need to use this over again. So we're just going to take this off and pull this to the side and rotate this out. We're going to take our star. Out. We're going to take our spring. We're going to save this too because we're going to reuse this again. We're going to do the same thing up over on the side here, like that. Then we take this adjuster out. Don't lose it. That spring falls off there, so be careful. Don't lose that spring. We're just going to put it up here for now, and then we're just going to remove the shoes from here. And we'll take this out. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to lubricate every place that the spring or the shoe is going to touch. Lubricate it. And we'll grab our new shoes. Now, I want to point this out to you also. You have a primary and a secondary shoe. This shoe, as you can see, is shorter. This shoe is your forward shoe. This shoe is your rear shoe. The larger shoe goes to the back. goes to the back. This is your larger one. It's close to the back. 
So we're going to take this. Okay, first thing you do is put your shoe to your, uh, your blocking brake. And then we're going to put our seat clip back on that we previously removed, being careful not to lose it. And then you push it in with your screwdriver until it snaps in place. snapped in place. Now we're going to take our self-adjuster here. We're going to lay our self-adjuster back in there like that. Make sure your spring is still in its location. Then we're just going to lift it up. We're going to hold it in with our thumb. Just putting up here for now. You don't have to worry about lining anything up yet. Put your pin through your, your shoe and your self-adjuster. Put your spring back on. Then you take your tool, put it over the top. Turn it like that, and it lines up. I'm going to bring you closer and show you what I mean by lines up. You see right here how it lines up inside there? You have the, the cut going this way, and the, and the pin is going the other direction. See, it's 90 degrees of the opening. All right, our spring is still in place here, and now this is locked in place. Thing we're going to do is you're going to put your lever back on. You hook it in the back over here first, like this. Just a little hook goes around like that. And then this, you just push it up and it locks right in place like that. If you need to push it up, you can push it right here, push it down on the bottom. All right, so now this shoe is locked in. We made sure our wheel cylinder is lined up correctly. We're going to put our strut back in like this. Not too important yet. We're going to come back to that in a minute. We're going to grab our other shoe and we'll put the other shoe back on. Okay. We're going to put this back through here. A little bit rusty so we're going to put some grease on this too. spring back on. Once that spring's on, then we'll come back and we'll set everything up the way it's supposed to be. Once that spring is caught back on over here, we're just going to line everything up, shoot with the wheel cylinder, I'll bring you in and show you in a second. We're going to take our spring, put our spring back over here. And we're either going to take our tool or we're going to use ply, uh, the cut and pliers. And then we'll lift this back up here, over the top like that. 
Make sure you bend that spring back down so it's nice and tight like that. We're going to put our other spring back on here. We're going to take our tool, put it on here, and hook it over the top and pull that back on. And we're going to bend this back down up on top here too. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to reinstall our, uh, our self-adjuster. Self now, the way you put the self-adjuster on is that this part here goes to the back here, because this never adjusts. This will. This always has to stay stationary there. This spring only has one way it can go. You can't put it on like this because the spring is going to interfere with the adjuster. It has to go like this. So we're going to put the spring on first. We're going to hook it on the shoe in the back of the shoe here. And then we're just going to pull the shoes together and hook that spring back on here. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put our star adjuster on. We're just going to loop it up a little bit here where it's going to slide on. We're going to catch it in here. And then we're just going to pull the shoes apart. Applies, we're going to straighten this out. We're just going to bend this so it's closed a little bit here. Like that so it doesn't come out. And that's it, we're all set. Let me bring you in, I'm going to show you exactly what was done now. Okay, you see that pin through there? You see how it's at a, at a 90 degree angle from the opening? We have our, our uh, strut rod connected on here for the, uh, for the parking brake, uh, self, I mean for the self adjuster. We have our parking brake pin through here. We have our C-clip back on. We put our spring back on here to hold the back shoe. We bent it down just a little bit here to keep it from popping off. We made sure our wheel cylinder is connected in there properly. I don't know if you can see that, but you see how it's in there properly. The strut is connected into the parking brake lever correctly. This one here for the wheel cylinder is in where it's supposed to be in the shoe. The spring is connected on where it's supposed to be here. That pin is at a 90 degree angle of the opening. Our, our uh, self adjuster is pushed back in and locked in place here and here. The spring is on here and here. And that's it, we're pretty much all set. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the drum back on and we're gonna adjust the brakes and uh, we're gonna take this for a road test. Now don't forget, take off your, your pliers that was on the back over here to secure it in place. And that's it, you're all set. All right, any questions or comments or you need any advice, Drop me a line. I'll be more than happy to talk to you about anything. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.